For many years, plant breeders have modified crops to increase economic value and improve production practices. In the history of the common bean, you'll find a great example of this, but not very many people know about it. You see, plant breeders set in motion a change in bean plant architecture that allowed farmers to save time and money producing beans for consumers like you and I. Today we're going to talk about that change and how eventually it reshaped the growth of the bean industry. So what is bean plant architecture anyway? Well, humor me for a minute and think about it like this. So each kind of plant has this tendency to grow in a specific way, right? It might snake along the ground, climb up the drain pipe, or stand entirely free of support. These tendencies or growth habits are affected by the structure of a plant. Over the years, plant breeders have modified various plant structures to make it easier for farmers to sow, nurture, and harvest their crops. Historically, plant breeders have significantly changed the growth habit of bean plants in particular to improve the crop. Since my experience with beans revolves around eating them, I wanted to talk to an expert on the subject. So, I decided to call someone who knows much more about their growth habits and plant structure. Hope I'm catching them at an all right time. You have reached the Department of Crop and Soil Sciences at Michigan State University. Good afternoon. Jim Kelly speaking. Hey Jim, this is Bree calling with the Bean Cap Project. Hey. Say, would you go ahead and introduce yourself for us? My name is Jim Kelly. I'm a professor in the Department of Crop and Soil Sciences at Michigan State. And my research specialty is uh, on dry bean breeding and genetics. And I've been working at that uh, here at Michigan State now for about a little over 30 years. With over 30 years of experience, Jim seemed like the right guy to talk to. Tell us what you know about the architecture of bean plants. Okay. In beans, there's a, a range of plant architectural types that uh, range all the way from uh, decumbent types, much like cucumber vines. Decumbent, meaning the vines would grow along the ground with only the extreme tips pointing upwards. All the way to more upright types that are similar to soybeans in terms of their plant architecture. So how did bean plants grow originally? Well, Jim said... Most of the uh, traditional varieties, older varieties of beans, tend to have uh, a viney decumbent uh, plant growth where they, uh, they have... Uh, minimum amount of plant structure, so therefore that results in uh, plants uh, almost laying on the ground, pods touching the ground. Jim went on to explain exactly why decumbent varieties weren't ideal for farmers. You get development of diseases and so forth, and you run into higher risks then of loss uh, to uh, seed loss at harvest due to uh, discoloration of seed or actually germination of seed that might be and pods touching the ground. So how did plant breeders handle the problem? There was efforts made here at Michigan State University on the part of the bean breeders to develop a more upright type, or what we call a bush type. So while crossing for new varieties, breeders were trying to incorporate structure into the plant architecture that would allow the plants to stand more upright. What were those bush plants like? The bush type, they're not a very large plant, but they do set a lot of branches, and they set the pods in the branches, and those uh, pods then are off the ground. And keeping those pods off the ground was a big deal, so they kept with it, and... In the 1940s and 50s at Michigan State, they used x-ray mutations to develop a bush-type bean out of these vine-type beans. So bean plants started out with a viney growth habit and plant breeders wanted to introduce the bush type of growth habit. There was a variety of navy beans developed, a variety called Sanilac, that had that growth habit. This was the very first navy bean variety that grew that way. And it was an immediate success because uh, farmers liked it. Uh, they didn't have the same risks associated with it. Our acreage then moved from these uh, viney type beans to these bush type beans. But that was just the first transition. Over 10 years later, in the mid-60s and 70s, we saw some transition in our agriculture to more cash crop farming. Cash crop farming is essentially when crops are produced commercially for a profit, as opposed to just supporting the family farm. And the yields of these bush beans tended to fall off. They were not the most high-yielding types. We started seeing problems with root diseases. The air pollution they tended to damage 
these bush type beans. We look at crossing our white navy bean with black beans from Central America. Uh, these were more robust. These were uh, more upright types, better root systems, and more resilient and, and better able to handle the soil compaction and air pollution problems that we were facing. Gotcha. So we utilize those materials in crossing to change again the plant architecture from a bush type to an upright type that would uh, have an indeterminate growth habit. Indeterminate just means that the shoot wouldn't terminate in a bud. It had a narrow profile, it was upright. So, so what did this new growth habit in bean plants mean to farmers? That then opened up the opportunity then to our farmers to consider changing planting systems to narrower row width to facilitate the more upright type. Jim also explained how this change in plant architecture allowed farmers to streamline their harvesting methods for beans. We were able to transition from the more traditional harvest methods to direct harvesting of the crop. Prior to that time, uh, beans were harvested in a multi-step process, very long harvest day. How did the farmers react to the new upright types? The farmers immediately seen that they could direct harvest days, so they didn't need specialized equipment for pulling. They could use the same combines that we're using for soybeans and, and small grains, and they could harvest more beans in a day, reduce costs, and also give them some more flexibility in, in, in what they could uh, fit into their farming system. With those improvements, it's allowing more farmers to stay in the bean business and grow beans and find them economically competitive with the other options, other crop alternatives they have, you know. And that change hopefully keeps beans in our uh, agriculture for years to come because they're, they're good for you. Jim, thanks for shedding some light on our topic today. Your perspective adds a lot to the story. That's another accent anyway. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> thanks again. In between 2007 and 2011, you can see for your own eyes that because of this transformation in bean plant architecture, farmers have been able to convert almost entirely from traditional methods of harvesting to direct harvesting. This is just one example of how plant breeders can positively affect an industry. Breeders kept an eye on the growth habits in bean plants and an ear to the needs of farmers growing them so they could make changes allowing farmers to breed better beans for everyone.